Two frameworks suggest themselves to me listening to what you've been saying. One is Etienne Wenger talking about learning as a social process. Um, and he identifies four aspects to that. One of learning is making meaning, of coming up with a, a framework, a schema through which to understand something. And I think a lot of the process of becoming an historian is about that, thinking of history the way a historian does, is having that framework through which to understand things. But there's also, for Wenger, this notion of learning as doing, as practicing the craft of the historian. And I think both of you have spoken about that and, and tackling something through practicing the craft as well as thinking about the source, thinking about the, the, the text as an historian would. Both of which, I think, have happened very, very well in most undergraduate History, do, history degrees for a long time now. But Wenger also talks about this notion of learning as a process of belonging, of becoming part of a community. And I think, yes, you do have that in the seminar room of identifying yourself with the community of those who are studying alongside you. The online space makes that something which I think becomes much more accessible for many, that there, we have all, I'm sure, taught students who don't want to join in, in a seminar conversation and don't, aren't good at thinking on their feet. But once it moves into the online space, that time to sit, read, reflect, have a look a little more thoughtfully at how others are participating in that online space, you've got a more inclusive approach there. You also have the access to that for those who wouldn't necessarily otherwise be able to participate in the seminar. You can broaden, you can take down the walls, you can, you can make the room a much more accessible place. It needn't be tied to a physical type of physical space there. And there is also, for Wenger, this notion of learning as becoming, taking on the mantle of. I think he talks um, together with Jean Lave, uh, Jean Lave about this notion of legitimate peripheral participation. And both of you, in your reference to scaffolding, I think captures something of that. That at first, they aren't going to be thinking like historians because they're not yet historians. Thinking like a historian is something which requires years of practice and training and experience. But they can start to emulate some of those things and start tackling texts and tackling. Historic, the historical record in the sort of way that an historian might. And over a period of time, of course, as with any construction, the scaffold is something which we take away to leave the, the constructed building reality thing, whatever, behind. Um, and again, the online space, I think, makes that sense of, of, of taking on the persona of the mantle of the story a more interesting, more accessible thing. The other thing worth saying there is that the belonging, the becoming aspect of that isn't tied anymore to just the people who happen to be studying the same course, the same module as you are, that because of the international, the global dimension of the web of the internet, that the community in which they can start to belong and the people who they can start to emulate is something which is genuinely a global thing. And yes, we scaffold we introduce them to that through participation in a very small, safe, walled garden community there within their own module group, their own cohort. But over a period of time that they become participants in a global conversation of those studying history, of those who are historians. The other dimension, so the, I think the e-learning dimension does add more opportunity for that belonging becoming alongside the meaning and the, the, the doing aspect of history. The other thing that occurred to me as to what e-learning brings to the party is, is this notion of both data and information and hopefully knowledge and eventually perhaps wisdom. That you know the slides which you've been looking at earlier on today capture something of the data-rich environment in which these students have been learning, in which these students have been doing history in some sense. And we're just grazing the surface of what's there in that. The number of times that they viewed a Moodle post or the number of times in which they logged on to a WebCT forum is absolutely the first level of that. 
you know, over a period of time, the machines are going to be getting much, much better at giving us much more granular information about how long they spent reading a particular post. That this cluster of words is something which starts to emerge in several of the posts within each group. Some of the stuff happening in that interface between artificial intelligence or machine learning, to use a less controversial phrase, and e-learning is fascinating stuff. It really is. And I think we are only starting to see the very, very beginnings of that. And then, of course, access to information. You have all of these wonderful, rich online resources. And the digitization, not just of the present there, but of so much of the past. The National Archives putting so much of their resources online, British Library, and so many other organizations doing similarly. And that sort of primary source material being something which is so right now so readily accessible to so many students of history. Online learning is there's so much to offer there. But then we move beyond that to, I think, the construction of knowledge, a ref nod in the direction of Vygotsky, of course, of, as a group, through the conversation that takes place in the online space, that sense of making meaning of this information is something which emerges through that discussion, through that dialogue. And Again, because we've got the data, that's something which we can capture. And perhaps eventually and hopefully wisdom emerges that they become more critical, they become more reflective, not just on the source material which they have access to, but also on the process of how that is interpreted or constructed, depending on your perspective on that particular question. And yes, the creativity as the outpouring of that emergent wisdom from not just each individual's interaction with the information, but from the participating community as a whole, and how they are creating something special as a group of students, as a group of online learners. <laughs>